Bill Andrews from the Center of Sciences. Uh, his talk is entitled Small uh, Molecule Stimulators of uh, Telomerase.
don't have telomere shortening, but they still age. And to address that, I'd like to go back to the dynamite model of telomere or of aging. And in humans, we have, I'm going to just show two, two to six of dynamite now. One is aging one, let's say, is telomeres, and aging two is something else. I don't know what that is, actually they're stressing the cognitive dysfunction, or whatever. Okay, so in mice, this might be exactly the opposite. In fact, we kind of believe it is the opposite because we know that mice don't have telomere shortening except when they start to get older. And so the, tel the fuse for telomere shortening is much longer. They still have this other stick of dynamite that is actually causing their aging. Again, the cognitive dysfunction, oxidative stress. Uh, if those are the best guesses. All right, now, I think we've all, or most of us have seen the paper recently from Ronald Pennell's lab at Harvard where he was actually able to make mice younger, or at least appear more youthful and healthier. He took old mice and made them more youthful and healthier by lengthening their telomeres. Uh, this got a lot of press. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to explain this, this, this particular experiment in terms of the six of dynamite again. Notice in the case of mice, uh, the, we, the mice normally have this very long fuse for telomeres, tumor short. What Rhonda Pinnell did is he first engineered these mice so that that telomere, that fuse was short. And now all of a sudden these mice started aging by telomere short. And, and as a result, they, they essentially died at about one year of age. He then, uh, after, so when these mice got to be very old, he then lengthened the telomeres and then found that these mice actually started acting younger, started looking younger, a lot of different animals that were behaving better. And it, he was able to show that this was due to the length of the telomeres. Whether this was aging wasn't really shown. But he did, he, he was able to show that the mice became uh, youthful and healthy. Now, as it turns out, several labs have now looked at animal species all over the world, looking to see how common what's called telomere replicator senescence is. Um, and that's where senescence occurring by telomere shortening. And it turns out to be really rare. Okay, almost all the animal species in the world, fish, birds, reptiles, they all age by other mechanisms besides telomere shortening. And then it turns out it's only found in mammals, but not all mammals. Uh, rodents, for instance, do not age by, like as I said, mice don't age by telomere shortening. And in fact, the only animals, only mammals, that have been shown to actually age by telomere shortening, or at least have replicative senescence, telomere replicative senescence, are dogs, cats, horses, primates, deer, sheep, and pigs. And it's, it's good to see our favorite pets are up there, too. All right, so this takes me to the next part of my talk. Um, can we lengthen them? And telomerase, this is a, a cartoon of telomerase. The green is shown. With, the DNA is a double helix. <coughs> telomerase is bound to the very end of this telomere and lengthening it. And that's what telomerase does. It lengthens telomeres. Unfortunately, it's only found in our reproductive cells. It's not found, it's, the gene is turned off in all of our other cells. And, uh, that's a whole other lecture as to why that possibly is. But at Sierra Sciences, we are doing high throughput drug screening, or at least, because we're not just doing drugs anymore, we're doing high throughput screening uh, to try to find uh, synthetic chemicals or natural substances that will get inside the cells and turn this telomerase gene on as a way of lengthening telomeres. So we're using high throughput screening robots uh, shown here. We have two of them there. And this is a typical example of one of our screens. If you look, the uh, y-axis is showing the amount of h tert expression. h tert is the name of the protein component of telomerase, which is the Great limiting steps. So, in order to turn telomerase on in the cell, you need to turn the H tert gene on. Over on the far left, you can see that we have negative controls, positive controls, and we have two sets of negative controls and one set of positive controls. And then occasionally, these are different uh, synthetic chemicals in this case that we're screening. Occasionally, we find one that actually gives production of the H tert mRNA in the cell. And you can see we do them all in quadruplicate uh, just to verify that we don't have. Some positive, and uh, so we, and we call those a hit. Uh, when we when we get a hit like that, what you see hits about one one in every two thousand different things that we screen. 
So we did it, we uh, then run, it, run the PCR product onto a um, electrophoresis gel. And we want to verify that we see a band of the right size, which says that we're not amplifying something else that looks like telomerase. We then do uh, telomerase activity assays, which normally are called trap assays. Uh, and this is an electrophoresis gel showing just how we analyze one of our hits. Uh, this one is C0057684. And on the far left, we first we run HeLa cells. HeLa cells are cancer cell line. And they produce a low level amount of telomerase, but they enough telomerase to actually make themselves immortal, to keep the telomeres from shortening them further than they already are. So we have a X amount of cells in the very first lane there. The next lane, we have 5% as much of those cells. So we have two different uh, quantitation markers, essentially. The next lane shows our normal cell line, which is, in this case, we're using MRC5 fibroblasts, human, human MRC5 fibroblasts. And you can see that there is no ladder. So telomerase in, in the trap assay is identified by seeing a ladder of bands. And uh, uh, in that case, in that <coughs> untreated lane, you see no bands. But in all six replicates of testing C0057684, we see a ladder, and we see that it's about equivalent to what 5% of HeLa does. So that means that we are producing enough telomerase from this compound to produce enough telomerase to be about 5% of what HeLa is, and hopefully that's about 5% of what it will take to make a human cell immortal, or at least uh, have not had replicated senescence. Well, one, one major thing that we discovered through all this, and this has been predicted before, but I don't think anybody's ever able to show this, is that the rate limiting step of telomerase expression is totally at the mRNA. So once we figure out a way to turn on the messenger RNA, turn on the promoter to produce that messenger RNA, all the different steps in, of, of expression, transcription elongation, translation, post-translational modifications, transport of the protein, all that seems to work and we get activity. So, the main, so it seems like the main way, the main thing you got to do to turn on telomerase is to turn on telomerase promoter. <clears throat> so far, we have screened 257,163 chemicals and natural substances. And from that, we have found 57 families of hits. 39 of those are uh, synthetic chemicals, where when we, we find different hits, we find sometimes they, they look very similar. One might have a fluorine versus a bromine on the chemical. That way we just put them into the same family. We have 39 families of chemicals, and the rest of them are natural substances. When we, when we get a hit, we try to give it a score by looking at, like I was showing before, that C0057684 is 5% of helium. That would mean it has a score of 5. And the scale shows 0 to 100, but 100 means that it's uh, got the same amount of telomerase activity as a heel cell. Well, 0 would be essentially the equivalent to a clock ticking at normal speeds. This is ticking a little faster than normal, but in order to show in my next slides, I'm going to have to have it it's ticking faster. But this is, this is now, without any telomerase, how, let's say, how much a, a cell would essentially uh, age, or, or how much replicated senescence would we have found hits now, both chemical and synthetic, that have that produce enough telomerase to essentially slow this clock down. We have synthetic or uh, natural substances that score a three on the scale, and we have synthetic chemicals from our screen, random screening, that score a six. With the synthetic chemicals, at least, we've been able to do medicinal chemistry to design even better chemicals from the information we learned from our uh, random screening. And we've been able to get chemicals up to 16 now. So we have things that are 16% of the way to actually uh, be where we predict uh, uh, replicative senescence will stop, at least 200 replicative senescence. Now, in the next year to three years, we actually feel that we can actually get to a point of having 100 where we can actually produce enough telomerase to stop the clock. And then after that, we hope that. You know, knock the roof off that, but then and actually get things that will actually reverse. Them. <laughs> and the only reason we believe this is possible is because of Rhonda Pennell's recent experiments in Harvard. We, we've always thought it might be possible, but at least the best proof of concept that this could actually be a reality is from Rhonda Pennell's experiments. So 
So <clears throat> at this point, I'd like to talk about clinical studies. And first, I got to say, there aren't very many clinical studies because there aren't very many uh, things available now that we can take that can uh, lengthen infection term longness. But the very first thing that's come on the market is called TA65, marketed by TA Sciences. And we did a clinical study on that uh, a few years ago. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't a uh, double-blind, placebo-controlled experiment. Uh, and, and, and it only it really wasn't from a random population. We were only provided with blood samples from people that had already been taking T865. But we did get some interesting results from that. Well, besides the fact that we did see an improvement in immune functions, um, with the more important thing, or at least the significant thing that I want to present here, is that we did see that telomeres were getting lengthened. At least we could see that the shortest telomeres were getting lengthened. Well, this is this is showing on the y-axis now is the number of short telomeres that are found in different blood samples from a person, and uh, these are different twelve different subjects that were tested. These, these subjects had all been on T65 for more than a year, and so the first bar, the black bar in each case, is before they went on the drug or drug, I don't call it a drug, uh, uh, the natural product T65, and the, the gray bar is. Uh, at least one to four years afterwards. And what we see is in 12, 10 out of the 12 cases, we actually saw a reduction in the number of short telomeres. Uh, this is published in uh, Rejuvenation Research, 2010. And the only, the only two cases where we didn't see a reduction in the number of short telomeres were the two cases here that had the lowest amount of short telomeres to begin with. Those were the two youngest people and it might not be, it might be that they just didn't have enough short telomeres to actually really get an accurate measurement there. But in all the other cases, the number of short telomeres got reduced in, in the patients taken to use it. Again, this was not a double blind placebo control, so there was no placebo group here. And this isn't a random population because it came from people that actually were concerned about their health enough that they actually went and purchased the ACC. Now another product has just been launched in the last two weeks. It's marketed by Isagenics. And we have a clinical trial that's just now getting underway. In this case, it will be a double-blind placebo control experiment. And it will come up from a random population. There'll be 30 random subjects included in this experiment. Uh, they'll all be pre-screened for short telomeres. Since the main thing we'd be measuring is the production of short telomeres, we don't want to be using subjects that don't have any short telomeres to measure. Uh, such as very young people. So it would probably be most of the people would be over 65. We'll be measuring baseline, three months, six months, and 12 months. And adverse events will be tracked. So any kind of health-related issues that might surface as a result of telomerous induction will be measured. These are a list of the different things that we'll be studying. I'm not going to go through them one after another. I feel free to look at them. And if anybody is interested in and talking to me about it, it's not too late to add another test. Uh, and so this is just some of them, and the other ones are listed right here. Um, this study is, is supposed to get underway in September. We'll also be photographing people, faces, hands, because one of the things that was noticed by a lot of people taking T65 is the age spots were disappearing, but nobody had any documentation of that. So we're trying to get, get all that stuff too. All right, so since, since I am in the module today called cancer, I thought I should talk about cancer. Uh, and <coughs> it's, it's well known that 85 to 95 percent of all cancers express telomerase. Well, this means, therefore, that telomerase must cause cancer. And I want to present this as a misconception. Uh, it's not necessary. It could also be just as easily explained as cancer causes telomere suppression. So telomere doesn't necessarily cause cancer. Cancer can be caused in telomeres. And we don't know. And we don't know because correlation does not mean causation. What I want to do is, is present some uh, facts and stuff about this suggested that we really don't have data saying that telomeres causes ca cancer. It just is something that actually became a common thing to say, and it's, I, I rank it as essentially a rumor. Um, there's been no scientific publications that show that telomeres causes cancer. Uh, there has been a few publications suggesting that telomeres causes cancer. 
And all of these have been in months. And none of these, there hasn't been any publication since 2005. And even the authors that published those papers are now publishing papers saying something else which I'll come to. So the problems with the papers that have been saying that, that tolerance causes cancer is there's such a thing as artifacts of overexpression. Anybody who has a lot of experience, like I have years ago, and my, my job at a company called Burlex Life Sciences was to overexpress proteins for production reasons. You know that overexpression of just about any gene is going to cause, is going to wreak havoc on expression throughout the genome. So, so expression of any gene can cause problems. Another problem is insertional mutagenesis. In all experiments that have been looked at so far, they've inserted the genes into the chromosomes. And we know that, that expression can be affected by uh, point mutations that are like hundreds of thousands of bases away from the gene that you're looking at. And so it's really hard to insert a gene into a chromosome without having some type of effect on genes, gene expression somewhere else on the chromosome and even on other chromosomes. Now, mice are also very cancer prone, uh, which, is, which is something that, that kind of like makes this data a little less interpretable. Uh, but you notice that in some of the papers that people have read these, people have made cancer resistant mice in order to study the effects of telomeres. But since mice are very cancer prone, these telomerase resistance uh, effects that they did probably made mice about as cancer resistant as, resistant as humans already are. Now, there's also been papers on other activities of telomerase. Uh, and that's OK, as far as I'm concerned. It's OK if telomerase is doing other things besides uh, lengthening telomeres, unless they're also causing some problems. And hopefully, if they are causing problems, we can block those activities without blocking the activities that, uh, that we really are interested in, and that's the telomere lengthening. Now, there has been, years ago, many studies that have been done, just about everything imaginable, to test whether or not telomerase can, does cause cancer. Uh, this is the list of you know, soft auger assays, contact inhibition assays, have been done uh, you know, back in the uh, approximately year 2000. And Absolutely nothing was detected that suggested telomerase could cause cancer in any way possible. Uh, but now, as I was saying, the authors that were publishing that, that telomerase could be causing, might be causing cancer, the tune has changed a lot since 2005. Now there's a lot of data saying that short telomeres cause cancer. For every paper that ever suggested that telomerase causes cancer, there's now 20 papers that are saying that short telomeres cause cancer. And what's happening is when telomeres get short, chromosome rearrangements occur and mutations occur that can lead to cancer. So telomeres, remember, are something that protect the tips of the chromosomes. And when they get short, the chromosomes can rearrange and fall apart. And all these kind of mutations can cause all the different genes that can be mutated that are required to cause cancer. Uh, there are some people that say that cancer requires up to 10 to 12 mutations. And it might be that all these mutations pretty much occur all of a sudden uh, when telomeres get short. The immune system becomes weaker and less capable of fighting cancer when telomeres get shorter. We know this from the AIDS. When, when, when people were first getting the AIDS virus back in the early 80s, doctors were really surprised that these patients had no T cells. But that was because their T cells had disappeared due to telomere shortening. And the weak immune systems became very weak, and they started getting a lot of different diseases like complexive sarcoma, typical cancer. So the message here is what we really want to do is keep telomeres long. <clears throat> and telomeres keeps telomeres long. And so telomeres might be a much a better player than a, lot of, than a lot of the rumors going on that it's something that causes cancer. It might be the best way to actually fight and cure cancer. So cancer summary, short telomeres cause cancer and disease and decrease our ability to fight cancer, and telomeres can keep telomeres long. I'd like to end with one little kind of interesting observation. NASA, the National Institutes of Health reports that if you, if you take a thousand people at random, age 60 to 64, and look at them for a year, you'll find that 13 of them get cancer. That's pretty much the statistics for that age group right now. But in the case of TA65, that looked at a lot more than 1,000 people at that age group. They've actually had no reported cases of cancer yet. What this means, I don't know because it's not a real clinical study, but it is an interesting observation. It is mentioned in this publication. 
in Rejuvenation Research 2010. And uh, I want to thank you very much. And any questions? Thank you. 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 Thank you.